This e-learning module is designed to provide some background information regarding inefficiencies in the therapeutic development process, as well as discuss some ways that animal disease models can be used to optimize approaches to therapy development. Most of us, as biomedical researchers, have a general understanding of the process by which a treatment we study in the laboratory setting might one day make it to the clinic. And in some ways, it can be seen as quite simple. Step one, discover compound. Step two, make sure it works in your animal model of choice. Step three, start treating people. But of course, this is a dramatic oversimplification, and we know that there are many, many smaller steps along the way, the sum of which add up to 10 to 15 years and millions of dollars just to shepherd a single drug from point A to point B. At its absolute best, this process is inefficient, with only a small percentage of drugs that start out here, ever making it over to the clinical setting. In fact, a recent study conducted by researchers at MIT and published in the journal Biostatistics reports an ultimate clinical trial success rate of only 3.4% in certain challenging disease markets, such as oncology. The ultimate reason for failure may stem from an assortment of causes, including a small set of drugs that just aren't financially viable. However, as high as 87% of translational failures at the clinical stage come as a result of problems with safety or efficacy of the therapy, which are in fact the main aspects that the scientific portion of the treatment development process focuses on. Staggering inefficiency in drug development has been acknowledged and discussed across many biomedical and clinical specialties. Factors identified total up to an ultimate failure of the drug development system and include everything from limitations in the design and implementation of clinical trials themselves, all the way back to the foundational core of disease research, the selection and use of animal models of disease to study therapeutic interventions. Understanding the barriers that exist at each step along the therapeutic development pipeline is a prerequisite to working towards overcoming them, and consideration regarding the role of animal disease models at each step is vital. One of the most foundational discussions in disease research and therapeutic development is the question of how best to model the disease in question. Most experimental animal models are induced to express a particular phenotype either genetically or through a particular intervention. But which model is best to answer your particular question? What are its particular strengths and weaknesses? And how well does it recapitulate the human clinical environment and condition of interest? All of these constitute fundamental questions that must be answered when designing a therapeutic development study. Perhaps the most fundamentally challenging and pivotal issue in therapeutic development research is how best to model the human clinical environment. In fact, this challenge has been implicated as a primary reason that so many treatments fail in the clinical setting. Initial animal studies focus on induced disease in subjects that are nearly genetically identical, have carefully timed disease onset, uniform progression curves, and a lack of comorbid conditions. In all, variability is low to non-existent in the laboratory setting, but it is in fact the norm in a human clinical trial. Small treatment effects can be magnified in induced disease models and may disappear entirely once the variability of clinical disease enters the picture. Take, for example, the case of spinal cord injury, where a quick PubMed search brings up almost 70,000 publications focusing on the mechanisms of injury and potential treatments. Most of the preclinical studies on this list are conducted in rodent models of injury. And while these studies have reported some immensely important findings with respect to understanding the pathophysiology underlying injury and have helped to identify countless potential therapeutic targets, there is also no shortage of things that seems to improve outcome after spinal cord injury in mice and rats. But when it comes to successful translation of these findings to people living with spinal cord injury, the outcomes are not so encouraging. To date, there has been no successful treatment translation from the laboratory to the clinical setting for spinal cord injury. 80% of people with sensory motor complete injuries at the time of onset remain that way despite access to excellent health care. There have been numerous notable failures of promising drugs in human clinical trials, and clearly something is getting lost in translation between the benchtop and the bedside. Worse yet, this is not an isolated example, and the same story can be told for other diseases irrespective of body system, such as ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, 
glioblastoma, pancreatic cancer, acute kidney injury, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, and the list goes on. Perhaps this quote by Derek Lowe, as cited in Science Translational Medicine, best describes the why. It's hard sometimes for people who've worked in other industries to appreciate this. Drug development is a unique combination of very high regulatory burden and very high failure rates. So it's tempting to say that the regulations cause the failures. But that isn't true. Biology causes the high failure rates, specifically our lack of understanding of biology. At the heart of these translational failures is our inherent challenge to accurately model disease biology in response to therapy in the laboratory setting. This is where the concept of veterinary disease models may offer an opportunity for process improvement. The idea that pets develop similar diseases to their human counterparts, including things like obesity, diabetes, cancer, and various types of heart disease to name a few, can present a powerful opportunity to model disease in a veterinary clinical setting through the use of veterinary clinical trials. 68% of households in the United States own pets. That equates to 94 million cats and 90 million dogs. These pets often develop an assortment of diseases spontaneously, many of which have correlates in the human clinical setting. Because of the genetic diversity of pet populations, their shared environment with their owners, and ranges of disease progression and severity that mimic the human clinical population, these natural animal disease models have high biologic relevance when it comes to mirroring human clinical disease. Additionally, opportunities to study and treat these animal diseases by way of veterinary clinical trials offers the ethically desirable scenario where treatment of a disease in a veterinary patient can advance the understanding and outcome of health for both man and his best friend. There are lots of examples of veterinary clinical research conducted with the intent of advancing translational science. Clinically relevant and available veterinary disease models range from epilepsy to lymphoma, with many examples in between. Drug studies conducted in the veterinary clinical setting might be primarily to assess safety, to evaluate efficacy, or oftentimes both. These types of studies require a true team science approach with inclusion of veterinarians, research scientists, and physicians all playing a role towards improved translational success. Some important considerations, not unlike a human clinical trial, include a priori sample size determination to ensure a well-powered study, careful selection of outcome measures that assess known therapeutic targets and clinically relevant treatment effects, ethical review and approval by institutional review boards, and informed consent, in this case given by the owner of the animal. The design and conduct of veterinary clinical trials is an emerging area of interest for many researchers on the translational spectrum, with groups such as the NCI-funded Comparative Brain Tumor Consortium and the NCATS-affiliated CTSA One Health Alliance paving the way with infrastructure, investigator support, and results to facilitate this bi-directional initiative in health research. To learn more about the concept of veterinary disease models or to connect with researchers already working in this area, visit ctsa1healthalliance.org.